Good morning and welcome back. I hope you have been enjoying my lectures. So today we are back with SLE part 3. Myself Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you simply pathology. Without wasting any time, let us begin. So we are now going to see in this particular lecture the morphological changes that are found in SLE. No, now for all the images, please visit my Instagram page at the rate simply pathology to avoid any kind of copyright issues. I will be coming up with more of my original drawings and pictures. Stay tuned. So number one, at the level of blood vessels, what is happening in SLE? There is an acute necrotizing vasculitis, okay, characterized by fibrinoid necrosis of the vessel wall. I have given a very, very beautiful picture of this in my Instagram. Please go and check there. Now at the level of the kidney, now remember kidneys is one of the vital organs which are involved in SLE and around 50% of the patients of SLE, they are having clinically significant renal involvement. Okay. Now there are multiple important MCQ questions that comes in exam. There are around six patterns of lupus nephritis. Okay. Now the most common pattern is the class four lupus nephritis. The least common pattern is class one, which is having the best prognosis. Now the most common pattern, which is associated with a wire loop lesion is class four. Now, most common pattern associated with renal vein thrombosis is class 5 lupus nephritis and the pattern which is associated with a worse prognosis is class 6. Okay, so let us see what are these patterns. So, class 1 is also called as minimal mesangial lupus nephritis. Class 2 is called as mesangial proliferative lupus nephritis. Class 3 is the focal lupus nephritis. Class 4 is the diffuse lupus, nef uh, lupus nephritis. Class 5 is membranous lupus nephritis and class 6 is advanced sclerosing lupus nephritis. LN stands for lupus nephritis. Now, just one thing over here I wanted to tell you and I forgot. Now, the damage to the kidney is because of immune complex deposition and therefore it is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, now moving ahead, the class 1 lupus nephritis. Now, I, have, I will be giving very nice images of all these classes of lupus nephritis to please go and check out. And why are these images very important? Because in these exams, in the next exam that you are going to face, they are not going to give you many other details. They are going to use a lot of images. And you have to first recognize the condition, then you have to answer the questions. So, class 1 lupus nephritis, as I already mentioned, has the best prognosis. It is the least common variety and it uh, basically over here the immune complexes okay that is depositing okay they can be demonstrated by immunofluorescence and electron microscopy now the very classical feature of this is that that no structural changes can be seen on light microscopy so under the microscope that we are watching we cannot see any structural changes okay and those can only be demonstrated uh, in under immunofluorescence and electron microscopy now class 2 lupus nephritis now what happens over here so in class 2 lupus nephritis, there is a proliferation of the mesangial cells. So mesangial cells are found in the mesangium of the kidneys and over there, there is a proliferation. There is a pro deposition of the mesangial matrix as well. Now here, there is no involvement of the glomerular, uh, glomerular capillaries yet. And under immunofluorescence, we see that there is a granular mesangial deposits. Okay. Now class 3 lupus nephritis, if you see, now class 3 lupus nephritis, if you see, there is involvement of less than 50% of the glomerulus. So this is a focal. Now just remember one thing, whenever there is involvement of the kidneys, okay, the involvement of the kidneys can either be segmental or it can be global. So what is the meaning of segmental? For example, the disease process is involving only a portion of the glomerulus. So that is called as segmental involvement. And if it involves the entire glomerul glomerulus, it is called as global. Okay. So so over here in class 3 lupus nephritis, we are having proliferation of the endothelial mesangial cells along with accumulation of leukocytes, capillary necrosis and hyaline thrombi. So remember there is proliferation. So there is a cell proliferation with cells, endothelial and mesangial cells. Plus there is infiltration by the leukocytes because there is inflammation and there is capillary necrosis as well. Plus sometimes you can have thrombus formation also. Now. Sometimes you can see focal necrotizing lesions as well as crescent formation. So what is the crescent formation? If you see there is extra capillary proliferation and you can see it. Okay. Now this class three lupus nephritis, they can either heal or they can be progressive and they can progress to class four that is diffuse uh, glomerular nephritis and ultimately they can be scarring and end stage kidney disease. So this is all about the class three. Now coming to class four lupus nephritis, which is the most important 
important okay it is the most common and most severe form of lupus nephritis and the most common pattern which is associated with the wire loop lesion okay now the lesions which are similar to class 3 but they differ in extent now as we saw in class 3 around less than 50 percent of the glomerulus were involved but over here around 50 percent or more of the glomeruli is involved again it can be segmental or it can be global as we saw for class 3 and there is a marked increased in the cellularity throughout the glomerulus okay now one very very important exam viva question plus your mcq question plus your next question will be based on this now very important that there is a sub endothelial immune complex deposition okay which is causing a circumferential thickening of the capillary wall if you go through my community post i have given a very beautiful image of that and i have given you one question so these sub endothelial immune complex deposition which is causing circumferential thickening of the capillary wall these form what is called as a wire loop lesion please go through my instagram page to see these these lesions and these wire loop lesions can be seen under light microscopy so remember the question comes they will ask you what type of immune complex deposition is a wire loop it is a sub endothelial okay it is a sub endothelial and it is seen where under light microscopy okay now the immune complexes they are readily detected by immunofluorescence and electron microscopy and the patients of class 4 actually they become symptomatic and they are presenting with hematuria and proteinuria now something about the wire loop lesion now these wire loop lesions they are seen in class 3 4 and 5 lupus nephritis they are most commonly associated with class 4 lupus nephritis they are formed by subendothelial deposits and the presence of wire loop lesion indicates active disease and a poor prognosis okay now moving ahead class 5 and class 6 lupus nephritis okay so class 5 lupus nephritis this is is the most commonly associated with renal vein thrombosis now there is a diffuse thickening of the capillary wall because of deposition of sub epithelial immune complexes okay so over here in class 5 lupus nephritis we are having immune uh, sub epithelial immune complexes okay whereas in class 4 we were having sub endothelial immune complexes okay so over here there is a sub epithelial there is an increased production of basement membrane uh, material and severe proteinuria okay now the class 6 that is the advanced sclerosing variety here there is sclerosis of more than 90 percent of the glomeruli sclerosis means fibrosis okay it is having a worse prognosis and represents end stage disease okay so all of these particular six classes they were involving the glomerulus of the kidney now in between the glomerulus we are having the tubular interstitial space where you are having the tubules and you are having the interstitial space so over there also rarely in sle the disease can present over there so tubular interstitial disease can occur occasionally and over here when there is an immune complex deposition it can lead uh, uh, these deposition occurs in the tubular or peritubular capillary basement membrane okay now uh, yes now the next uh, particular slide uh, this is all about the kidney now we will start with the skin so what is happening at the level of the skin so rash is present on the face along the bridge of the nose and cheeks which is called as the butterfly rash or erythema or it is also called as malar rash or erythema erythema means redness now these rash may involve the trunk and extremities as well okay and almost 50 percent of the patients are affected okay in their skin and when there is exposure to sunlight there will be worsening of the rash there will be accentuation or worsening of the rash now if you see under the microscope under HNE hematoxylin you will see that there is a vacuolar degeneration of the basal layer of the epidermis now this particular diagram is very well given in my Instagram page please go and check out plus there is dermal edema and inflammation under immunofluorescence you will see immune complex deposition at the dermo epidermal junction that is between the dermis and the epidermis at that junction you will find the deposition of the immune complexes okay under immunofluorescence and the clinical feature is they present Present with urticaria, papules, ulcer, as well as bullae. Okay, this is how they present. So, this is the skin manifestations of SLE. So, if you see over here, now very important MCQ is the carpet tack sign or tin tack sign or a cat tongue sign. Now, I, I urge everyone to go in YouTube and just type the, the carpet tack sign. You will be able to understand what a carpet tack sign is. So, what is happening that in SLE, you are having multiple lesions on the skin. So, and basically it is seen in DLE, that is discoid lupus erythematosus. Okay, it is seen in chronic discoid lupus erythematosus. This is just a variant of SLE only where the skin involvement is predominant. 
dominant. So when the adherent scale is removed from the lesions of DLE, the under surface of the scale will show certain plugs containing the hair follicles. And this is the classical carpet tack sign or the tin tack sign or the cat tongue sign. Now SLE also involves the joints, but classically remember the involvement is non-erosive sinovitis with little deformity in contrast to rheumatoid arthritis where there is increased joint deformity. Okay, At the level of the CNS, what happens that the autoantibodies of SLE or the immune complexes, they go and deposit in the small vessel and they lead to endothelial damage. Okay, this incites intimal proliferation leading to occlusion of the blood vessels. Ultimately, at the level of CNS, the patient presents with psychosis or neuropsychiatric manifestation. And another very important MCQ is this occurs due to the anti-ribosomal P antibody. Okay. Now moving ahead, the next symptom is the pericarditis and involvement of the other serosal cavity. For example, the pleural cavity, pericardial cavity, peritoneal cavity. So again, the involvement can be acute. In acute conditions, we get a fibrinous exudate. Whereas in chronic condition, there will be fibrosis and there can be obliteration of the cavity. Okay, it is characterized by pleural or pericardial effusion that can also occur. Now, at the level of the cardiovascular system, remember, okay, in around more than 50% of the patients that are presenting with severe symptoms, the most common uh, symptom is pericarditis. So, most commonly presents with pericarditis in around 50% of the patients. Now, the more classical or more specific CVS feature of SLE is non-bacterial verrucous endocarditis. So, remember, in SLE, the heart valves are involved and the most common heart valves involved are the mitral and the aortic valve. Another very beautiful diagram uh, I have given in my Instagram page regarding this okay so here there is a diffused leaflet thickening which is associated with stenosis and regurgitation so absolutely if the valves they are going to become very thick so the area for the passage of blood will become less that is there will be stenosis and some cases they can also have regurgitation of the blood okay so now very classical thing in SLE is the valvular endocarditis that we call it as Liman Sachs endocarditis, a very important MCQ. Now, this is a non bacterial verrucous, verrucous means cauliflower like, okay, verrucous endocarditis, which are typically 1 to 3 millimeter warty deposits on any heart valve on either side of the leaflet. So, leaflet is like this, so maybe on the top surface or maybe on the under surface, you can have deposits. So, the differential diagnosis of these particular, you know, lesions, that is these, uh, veg, veg, uh, these particular vegetations. So, in case of rheumatic heart disease, if you see, see the vegetations are quite small and they are confined along the line of closure of the valve leaflet. But in infective endocarditis, the vegetations are far more larger than in SLE. Now, remember one thing that SLE also predisposes to accelerated atherosclerosis, thus increasing the risk of myocardial infarction, coronary artery disease, as well as angina. And this accelerated atherosclerosis occurs due to the immune complex and aplamidated endothelial damage. So this is all about the cardiovascular system. Now if you come to the spleen, at the level of the spleen, there is splenomegaly as well as capsular thickening and as well as follicular hyperplasia. So what is happening over here, you see that there is a central pencillary artery, okay, and because of the immune complex deposition around them, there is an intimal and smooth muscle cell hyperplasia, giving rise to a classical onion skin lesion, which is again a very important MCQ, which is asked in exams. Now at the level of the lungs, the most common clinical feature is pleuritis and pleural effusion, which is present in 50% of the patients. Also, one important concept over here is a shrinking lung syndrome. Now, it is a restrictive lung disease and with uh, decreased lung volumes and normal lung parenchyma. So, over here, the lung becomes quite restrictive in nature, okay? Now, and uh, the lung volume also decreases, but the lung parenchyma is absolutely normal. Again, this is a very important MCQ that is the shrinking lung syndrome. Okay, at the level of the lymph node, the, they, they can be enlarged with hyperplastic germinal centers, but classically they are having necrotizing lymphadenitis and, there, and, and they have multiple activated cytotoxic T cells and macrophages and these cytotoxic T cells are so prominent that you, they, that you can mistake that for T cell lymphoma. So the differential diagnosis is a T cell lymphoma. Now coming to the blood, around 85% of the cases, you know, they present with cytopenias. There can be thrombocytopenia, leukopenia, as well as anemia and musculoskeletal involvement is seen in around 95% of the cases okay and the most common association with SLD okay is that of the musculoskeletal involvement 
Now the clinical features, so what will you see in a case of an SLE? You will see that a young woman has come to you around in the 20s or 30s with a butterfly rash fever, pain in the joints but there is no deformity, a pleuritic chest pain and photosensitivity. Now if you look at the kidney function test, you will see that there is proteinuria, hematuria, red cell cast and nephrotic syndrome. Now. If you look at the blood report, there will be cytopenias, for example, anemia, thrombocytopenia, leukopenia. At the level of the CNS, they can present with psychosis and convulsions. And at the level, level, level of the CVS, they can have coronary artery diseases. For example, MI and you know angina, all these things can be there. And there can be infections because of the drugs which are used in SLE due to the steroids. So why am I telling you about all these clinical features? Because nowadays, the questions are being asked in the clinical-based pattern. They are not going to ask you directly. They are going to give you a certain clinical features. They are going to give you the lab reports of that particular disease and then they are going to ask you certain question related to the disease so the first important thing is that you should understand which disease they are talking about okay and after that you can go forward with answering so if you don't know that you that they are speaking about sle then you cannot answer about sle because you will not know that what is the disease uh, topic okay again there is a hypocomplementemia why because all the complements have deposited along with the immune complex so the amount also the serum complement levels comes down now very important thing that the five year survival rate in sle is 90 percent whereas the 10 year survival rate in sle is 80 percent now another important mcq is most common cause of death so within 10 years of the onset of symptom if you see it is renal failure more than infections okay and overall if they ask you the most common cause of death it is cardiac failure now the treatment is as in any other autoimmune disease the treatment is with steroids and immunosuppressive drugs now before we end this topic two important you know syndromes are associated with sle one is the chronic discoid lupus erythematosus now why we are reading about this because they are going to to give you one sentence like this that all of the following are true about chronic discoid lupus erythematosus except so if you do not know all these particular points then you will not be able to answer such questions so there are skin manifestations of sle but there is no systemic involvement remember there is no system involvement only there are skin manifestations of SLE that is the butterfly rash will be there okay now there are skin plaques which is presenting with erythema scaliness follicular plugging and skin atrophy surrounded by elevated erythematous border around 5 to 10 percent of the patients may have systemic involvement as well okay and 35 percent of the patients will only have positive anti-nuclear antibody remember anti-ds dna antibody is not found if you look at the immunofluorescence it is just like sle there is immune complex deposition at the dermoepidermal junction just like sle now coming to the second important syndrome which is associated with sle is subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus now it is intermediate between sle and dle and predominantly there is a skin involvement now rash is widespread superficial and it is non-scarring so how is it different from dle that is chronic discoid lupus erythematosus because here first the skin rash okay is superficial or it is non-scarring remember okay and second and second how is it different from dle there is a presence of mild systemic symptoms consistent with sle okay so a very strong association this subacute cutaneous lupus erythematosus has a very strong association with antibodies to ssa anti rho and with hla dr3 genotype so guys with this we have ended with sle i hope you have enjoyed thoroughly this topic and i hope you make the best out of of it and uh, thank you very much guys for watching this video stay tuned please do like please do subscribe please do share with those in need and if you have any doubts please leave a comment thank you very much guys stay tuned i will be back with more such lectures thank you